We had a 15 year journey. And in those 15 years, we realized what it looked like to not be perfect, but to be really intentional about our marriage. Jonathan and Winter Pitts celebrated their 15 year anniversary in 2018. Less than a month later, Jonathan turned in their final manuscript for their latest book. Four hours later, Winter took her last breath in her husband's arms. Our marriage isn't lacking in significance. That has eternal significance that goes beyond our 15 years as well. In their book, Emptied, Jonathan shares their take on happily ever after and how their love story continues to help others, even in the face of loss and tragedy. Well, you wrote this beautiful book, Emptied, Experiencing the Fullness of a Poured Out Marriage. You were married for 15 years and 27 days. That's right. And um, God took your wife, Winter, to heaven. And my question is, why do you think that God purposed you to do this project together right before taking her home? Yeah, I don't, selfishly, I think about like his purposes for me first. Like I think about the reality of I had a really good marriage, a great marriage, 15 years, 27 days. And to be able to document that and also to be able to turn that book in the day that she died, we turned the final edit of the manuscript the day she died, was just a reminder to me that God gave me a very special gift in winter and gave us a very special gift in our marriage. Um, and before took, taking her home, like he gave me something really public and big as a reminder that he's in control and he's good. Um, second, you know, Winter had grown a ministry for um, several years, and uh, this was really, for us, she had developed all these resources for girls. We developed a resource for parents. And this was kind of one of those things that was like, okay, well, marriage is kind of at the center of family. You know, it's one of those things that kind of helps keep family together. And so we just felt like God was calling us to do it um, just really intentionally to kind of round out just the ministry that she had, that she was working and building, and we were building together in our family. And so in a lot of ways, we were praying that God would just bless and kind of expand the reach of the ministry that um, that we had together and that she had. And God did in a very mm -hmm. profound way, in a way I would never ask for uh, in taking her home. Um, but um, God's now using the brokenness of our story just to kind of bring wholeness, I think, to marriages and to families and people that are in need and also people that just need healing from in grief. Um, yeah. Which it's actually almost just as much of a, a, a resource for grief as well because my story is one of grief. But yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been really touched by your story, you know, just following it when it happened. I was just like, oh, you know, and her life, I think, um, even speaks now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a quote that Miles Monroe said. He said, um, don't die old, die finished. Wow. Um, and she, I feel, you know, writing 10 books, mm -hmm. um, you know, starting the For Girls Like You ministry, having four girls and being mm -hmm. married, like she really poured out herself and and really poured her, her, her heart, not in just um, her life, but in her marriage. And so for you and your girls, how are you doing? And how are you um, just carrying out her legacy day yeah. by day? Well, it's, it's funny that you say that. I've never heard that quote. Um, don't die old, die finished. But there's a verse, Acts 13, 36 says that David served the purposes of God for his generation and then he fell asleep. And I've heard that preached by Tony Evans, my old boss, many, many times, but there's just this reality that, that Winter finished the work that God had created her for, for her generation before falling asleep. So that's a big deal for me. And I think that's a part of us doing, a part of the reason we're doing so well is because we see that God accomplished the work that he wanted to accomplish through Winter. And I don't know why he'd take my girl's mom when they're 14, 12, and twin nine-year-olds, or why he'd take her when we're only 15 years into our marriage. But I do have this sense that Winter accomplished the work that he gave her to do. And like really turning that book in was just this sign that it is finished, you know? And so I think there's, um, so it doesn't make it easier. I mean, yeah. it's still really t tough and we have tough moments and tough days, but God's just given us, I think a peace um, that only comes and a joy that only comes in the middle of sorrow that we get from knowing about eternity and knowing Jesus and having hope about eternity that we wouldn't have otherwise. So I, I'd say we're doing about as well as anybody can do that's lost their wife, best friend, mom, and all that. But we're doing, we're doing well. I think we've, we just have good perspective on the reality of what's happened. Yeah, that's good. We continuously pray for you. Thank you. Definitely. And someone watching who maybe has just recently gone through something as devastating. Yeah. And they're grieving and they, they, they can't even, it's like moving to the next hour just seems so difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you have a word of encouragement for them of how they can keep going? Yeah. Well, I would say, um, one, two things. One, there's two scriptures that come to mind. The first, I think, is in Psalms where it says, um, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. I think it's Psalms 34, 18, maybe. But people sent it to me over and over again. I was kind of annoyed at first, but the reality was I would watch over these last seven months God unfold 
um, him being close to the brokenhearted, through him being there for me, through other people, through the church, through the body of Christ. So I would say, first of all, draw into the body of Christ, draw closer, don't isolate, just draw closer to the people of God, because it's the people of God that can bring God's comfort to you, and the Holy Spirit works through them. Um, second is, I've learned uh, Philippians 4.13 says, um, I, sh- I, can do all, I can do all these things through him who gives me strength. And these things are, are circumstances. And I used to think that was a verse that talks about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps when you're going through something or, you know, like that Jesus will give you the strength and not your strength. But really it's his. And so I would say lean into Jesus. So first lean into the church. Second is lean into Jesus. However you can, seek first the kingdom of God. Just seek after Jesus. Run after him. Because I found that it's in the middle of my loss that he's been closer than he's ever been. And um, so I take comfort in that. And now I know that it's not my strength. It's his strength working in me. You know, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So for me, like right now, like it's him. Like people are like, how do you do How are you doing this? How are you making it through? You know, you lost your wife, your dad by yourself with your four girls, all that. It's him. It's all him. And um, it's his strength working in me. So 